dues two fifteen. Conduct by Chief Inspector Anderson. How's your copy, Mrs. Twanky? Oh, you know me, love. I'm not one to complain. I do like a proper cup of coffee from a proper cup of coffee pot, but then um, I like my coffee like I like my men. Rich. Hot. Able to keep you up all night. <laughs> More often than not, though, love, I just have a cup of tea. Oh, well, I've one sent in. Have you ever had Earl Grey? I had him? I've never met him. Do you have one on party? How oh, dare you? Sugar, Mrs Twanky. No, oh, I didn't get a figure like this by having sugar. Tell me what happened on the 26th of December. Mm -hmm. Well, I heard the familiar voice of Abanaza walking up and down the street. Well, I peeped through the laundry window. I knew it was him, even though he had his hood up. He was shouting, new lamps for old, new lamps for old. I knew he was after my lamp, so I hid it in the one place I knew he wouldn't look. <laughs> and as I entered the laundry, she was stuffing my lamp up her dress. I inquired if it was the lamp, and she said no. She said it was a teapot. I was curious. She said, well, during these days of austerity, it was a handy way to keep herself warm. I asked whether I might have a cup. He started probing me, asking me all kinds of inappropriate questions. Given where she was hiding the pot, I simply asked, if she liked Assam. Going on about loose leaves and golden tips. Well, Assam does have a lovely nutty flavour. I asked for a sip, but she said she was out of cups. I offered to sip it directly from a saucer. Well, I was very uncomfortable. It's very difficult trying to hold a lamp between your thighs. He asked me if I was trying to strain the greens and then he tried to grab the spout. Eventually my thighs gave way and open sesame, the lamp hit the floor. I told her that the lamp was mine, which legally it is. The matter's still under investigation, so it currently isn't. Oh, yes, it is. Oh, no, it isn't. Oh, yes, it is. Oh, no, it isn't. Oh, yes, it is. Oh, no, it isn't. It is, it is, it is. It isn't, it isn't, it isn't. It very much sounds to me like you're a sore loser, Mr. Abanaza. You can't prove the lamp actually belongs to you, and this allegation appears to be nothing more than a blatant attempt. To use your position of power and influence to claim this magical lamp on a technicality. Mrs Twanky Counter claims that you tricked your way into her house and swindled her out of the lamp. Swindled? The woman's very much mistaken. I, very kindly in my opinion, merely swapped the old dusty lamp for a brand new one. What happened? Well, then she attacked me again. She, first of all, poked me in the eye with the spout of the lamp. Then she kneed me in the crown jewels. Then she chased me around the laundry, whipping my exposed buttocks with a towel. And if that wasn't bad enough, then she started rapping. She wrapped you in the towel? No, no, rapping. You know. Snoopy the Doggy Dog, Fifty Pence, that, that kind of rapping. The songs are all very modern and pantomimed these days. Anyway, eventually, I made good my escape. Taking her magic lamp with you? Taking uh, an old battered dusty lamp of no significant importance other than sentimental value with me. I have a small accommodation in the very bowels of Lancaster Castle. She wants tagging, I tell you, that woman. Her and her silly son, Aladdin. So, 
we decided to disguise ourselves as a pantomime horse. We were going to enter the courtyard and then sneak up Abanaz's back passage. The problem was our Aladdin ordered two back ends of the horse and no head. As a result, we couldn't really see where we were going. We only had a very small hole to peep through. As a result, we got terribly disorganised. We were ended up going round and round in circles and we were eventually found on the hard shoulder of the M6 by the police. Yes, fought and services. Reports of a broken down Reliant Dobbin. What a nightmare. That was a joke. Yes. Eventually, we made it into the castle. We kicked Abanaz's back doors in and then took him from behind. He wriggled free, of course, uh, and hid the lamp under his cloak, rubbing it vigorously. It was disgusting. The lamp was mine. I could polish it as fast as I like. Anyway, that's when the magic happened. That's when I realised that I, Abanaza, was in possession of the lamp. The lamp was mine. All mine. <laughs> but possession is not the same as ownership. No legal rule states that possession is nine-tenths of the law. There are a million of distinctions between possession and ownership. At the end of the day, we have the finest justice system money can buy. And I have lots and lots of money. I can drag this and Twanky through the courts for a very, very long time. Be careful, Mr. Abanaza. Money can't buy everything. Do remember they say the sun shines on the righteous. And I have the luck of the devil. Anyway, I grow tired of this conversation. I grow weary with all this fake news. If Twanky wants to pursue this further, she can get in touch with my lawyers. That's really all I have to say on the matter. Will that be all? Yes. Interview ends 5.15. With great power comes great responsibility. We need the power of the lamp now more than ever. For these are dark times, both for the little people and the planet. We need the magic of the lamp more than ever. But magic takes many forms. Ooh, I feel a song coming on. <laughs> now magic isn't always cards and scarves. Pulling rabbits out of top hats or sewing folks in half. Cups and balls and doves from up your sleeve. Well, it might well make you wonder that it might be make-believe You can pull a silver tenpence from your ear Smoke and mirrors might make Blackpool Tower disappear Pop a pin in a balloon and still it's fine You might turn hearts to diamonds or turn water into wine But if you're willing to believe that things aren't all from both sides Watch things closely and find the things we're hiding If you take a look and learn Maybe you'll decide That sometimes it's all illusion Oh yeah, it's all illusion Oh yeah, it's all illusion Oh yeah, it's all illusion Well in the flowers and the trees Cause they fill the world with wonder And they help to make us breathe A bulb sleeps underground through ice and snow And a seed can push through concrete It's amazing how they grow There are healing properties in marigolds There's a 
tree in California that's 5,000 years old. The flowers and trees keep us alive. So we must work to protect them. It is folly to neglect them. But if we're willing to believe that things aren't always the way that we perceive them. If you take a look and learn, maybe you'll decide that sometimes you might just spot it, view things from both sides. Watch things closely and find the things they're hiding. If you take a look and learn, maybe you'll decide that sometimes it's all illusion. Oh yeah, it's all illusion. Oh yeah, it's all illusion. It's all illusion. So there you are. Abanaza has the lamp and me, well, now I've got a tag on my left ankle. That means I'm not allowed anywhere near Abanaza for 12 months. But as soon as that tag comes off, I'll be back, and the struggle for the lamp will continue. The whole pantomime will play out again, just as it does every Christmas, just as it has every Christmas for 300 years. So, there we are. Good old panto land, eh? A great British tradition, completely unique. When we walk into pantomime, everybody's equal. It really doesn't matter whether you're young or old, whether you're rich or poor. For one night and one night only, it doesn't matter who we are. For one night, we're all just in it together. Good old pantomime. Right, I'll be back.